Sit on a bolster. Sit in Sukhasan. Use the fingertips. Press down into the fingertips on the bolster to ascend the spine. Lift the chest off the hips. Bring your hands to prayer position. Namaste. Release the shoulders. Release the face. Next to your body. Breathe and release. Remove the bolster. And you're going to come into Adamukha Virasana. So bring the big toes together, kneeling on the shins, separate the knees, and then walk your hands forward so your body comes down between your thighs. Bottom stays on the heels, and you lengthen through the arms. Rest the head on the floor. If your head doesn't rest on the floor, you can always put your head on a brick or a block. And if your bottom doesn't reach your heels, you can always sit on a block. Lengthen through the arms. From the side waist, right through to the fingertips. Have your hands as wide as your shoulders. And if that's sort of you haven't got enough movement there, then take the hands a little wider. Now we're coming into Adamukashvanasan. So straighten up through the legs, tucking the toes under, taking the heels down towards the floor. Legs are straight, the arms are straight. Press down into the feet, and then just walk the hands a little further forward so you get more length on your spine. Pressing into the hands, pressing into the feet. Release the head down. Relax through the back of the neck. So the neck is long, that is crucial for your head balance. Know that you have to keep your neck long. Keep the shoulders broad, thighs firm, abdomen soft. Hit the th thighs back, hit the shins back. You're going to come forwards into a forward bend. So walk forwards, have the feet hip distance apart. Lift the kneecaps and then clasp the elbows. Open through the backs of the knees, spread through the backs of the thighs. Lengthen the body away from the thighs to get the spine to lengthen even more. Bring the weight forwards into the toes, but keep the toes long. When you're ready, change the cross of the elbows, and then again, recreate that length through the front of the body. Face soft, gaze soft, legs firm. Lengthen from the hips right through to the elbows. Opening through the backs of the knees, spreading the thighs, drawing up through the inner legs up to the groins, pressing into the outer ankles. Then you're going to place the hands back down onto the floor, lengthen the body forwards, and then step back into your dog head down, Adamakushvanasana. We're going for more length here. Hit the thighs back. Open the backs of the knees. Head of the calf to the heels. Pressing into the hands, pressing down into the feet. Relax the face. Bend the knees, big toes together. Back to Adho Bottom on the heels, arms long. Release the face. Relax the tongue. Breathe. Now for your headstand, it's important that you have your head on a soft surface. So you want to either use a folded blanket or a towel Make sure that it's soft enough that the crown of the head is, can release and relax. A hard surface just agitates the brain. So you're going to, first of all, measure the distance of your shoulders. So bend the arms and place the elbows down. And then extend through the arms and interlace the fingers. Lift the shoulders away from the ears, pressing into the forearms. Do not collapse the shoulders in, lift it away. 
Check that the radi radius is above the ulna and that the wrists are rolling in. The tendency is the wrists want to roll out, so keep those forearms well grounded. Lengthen through from the elbow right through to the wrist. Now you want to find the crown of the head, that's right at the top of the head, so from the top of the ears draw a line and that's the crown of the head. Place that down in the, between the cupped hands, pressing the forearms down, again lift the shoulders away from the ears, this is crucial, it's vital. You're going to walk in with your feet, straighten the legs and still lift the shoulders, trying to lift the head off the floor. The arms become stronger. Keep that space from the ears to the shoulders and then come down and take a rest. Always check how your neck feels. If your neck feels tight or like it's done too much, you've gone too far, you must stop. If you want to move on, if the neck feels fine, then take yourself to a wall. You're going to interlace your fingers, so take the blanket right to the wall and interlace your fingers so that the fingers touch the wall. Remember the elbows are directly below the shoulders. And the crown of the head goes into the space between the hands. So take the crown of the head in, press into the elbows, lift the shoulders away from the ears. You're going to come up onto your toes and again check the neck. If the neck feels comfortable, stretch one leg up, keeping the other leg down. We're not kicking to the wall yet, and then change legs, still maintaining an awareness of the shoulders, a lift on the shoulders. This is really strong for the arms. Maintain that action, and then come down, take a rest. Check your neck. So rest in Adamukha Virasana, but keep the hands in the Shishasana position, the headstand position. When you're ready, if you want to carry on, place the head down again. Lift the shoulders away from the ears, press the forearms down, take one leg up, keeping the other toes to the floor, straight legs, and then change sides. Again, working the arms. Come back and rest. Adamukha Virasan. Bottom to the heels, head to the floor. Hands still in the Shishasana position. Okay, if you're comfortable with that and you want to go on a little further, we're going to do a right angle headstand. So, pull the arm blanket away from the wall a little, and then you're going to take your feet to the wall. So you're facing the wall, sitting on your blanket, take your feet to the wall. Now pull the back edge of your blanket back so that it's directly below your tailbone. And then just sit in Dandasan, pressing the legs down. If you can't sit in Dandasan, you can't do this pose. If you're leaning back at all, if it's too much for your hamstrings, please do not attempt this next bit. So the little finger's off the blanket, and the crown of the head comes onto the blanket between the gap. Remember, measure your elbows directly below the shoulders, and then place the crown of the head down between your hands. Lift the shoulders, press into the elbows and then carefully step the legs up the wall and lift your shoulders. So almost as if you're trying to lift the head off the floor. Press into the elbows, press the forearms down. Keep the radius above the ulna, keep that thumb side of the wrist above the little finger side of the wrist. Come down, take a rest. Check your neck. If it feels okay, you can continue. So place the head down again. We're gonna hold it for a little longer this time. Shoulders lifted away from the ears, elbows pressed down. Now have the feet pressing into the wall and have the ankles in line with the hips. Then exhale, come down, take a rest. If the neck's comfortable and you want to continue, turn around, take the blanket back in towards the wall. So this time you're going to kick up into a full headstand. Take the fingers in towards the wall, elbows in line with the shoulders, place the crown of the head down. Walk in with the feet, straighten up through the legs, kick up with one leg and allow the other leg to follow. Now here you must lift your shoulders, you must press into the elbows and you must press the forearms down. Lengthen the legs up the wall, trying to stretch up more and more to extend the spine. Keep the neck long, 
gaze soft, looking directly forwards. Now do not turn your head. Grip the legs together and press up through the big toes. Now you can come down at any point. Much better quality rather than quantity. Much better to come down if you need to. If you wish to balance, carefully take one leg away from the wall, stretch it up and then allow the other leg to join it. Grip the legs together so it feels like the two legs have become one leg. Lift the hips off the rib cage. Stretch up through the inner legs. Press the elbows down. Lift the shoulders away from the ears. Breathe. Kneecaps lifted, thighs firm. Open through the backs of the knees. Keep extending up. Press the elbows down. Lift the shoulders away from the ears. Grip the thighs together, rolling the inner knees back a little. Rolling the thighs in towards each other a little. To come down, bend the legs, keep the lift of the shoulders, and then exhale, release the feet to the floor. Rest in Adha Mukha Virasana, again checking the neck. Now if you want to move on, we're going to balance away from the wall. So we need to remeasure our legs. To take the heels in towards the wall, straighten the legs. And again, remember, you need to be able to sit in Dandasan. So press into the fingertips, roll the shoulders back and make sure you've got your head over the tailbone. If you're leaning back, then you're not ready to do this yet. So the towel was directly below your buttocks. Interlace the fingers, little finger hangs off the towel. Press the forearms down. Elbows as wide as your shoulders and the crown of the head comes down between the hands onto the mat. Now step your legs up the wall, press into the, shoulder, press into the elbows, lifting the shoulders, raise up one leg, stretch it up towards the ceiling, keep the other foot connected to the wall so you feel secure. Keeping the shoulders lifted, lower the leg, change legs, stretch the other leg up, lift the shoulders, press into the forearms. Go back to the first side, lift the leg up and see how you feel. If you feel strong here and stable, then you're ready to move on and maybe bring the other leg up. So work the thigh open through the backs of the legs and lift the leg up straight. Grip the legs together. Lift the shoulders, press down into the elbows, press the forearms down. Now the ankles need to be over the hips, over the shoulders, so that you're in one long line. Stretch up into the heels. Open the backs of the knees. Keep the shoulders lifted, lower one leg to the wall and then release the other leg and come down into Virasana. Adho Mukha Virasana, keeping the head down, rest the head on your hands. Take a few breaths here again to check the neck. Release the shoulders away from the ears. Now for freestanding headstand, again measure your elbows, interlace the fingers, place the head down. Walk up onto the toes, straighten the legs and then bend the knees in towards the chest. Grip the knees together, keeping the knees bent. Take the bent knees straight up towards the ceiling, press into the, press into the elbows, lift the shoulders away from the ears, knees up towards the ceiling and then straighten through the legs. Grip the legs together, open the backs of the knees, roll the thighs in towards each other, lift the hips off the chest, take the shoulders away from the ears, press the elbows down, press the forearms down, extend through to the little fingers, keep the back of the neck long, squeeze the legs together, feel very secure, then bend the, neck, the legs, release the knees, Bend them in towards the chest. Release the feet to the floor. Come back 
Adho Mukha Virasan, rest the head on your hands. Releasing the hands, rest the head on the hands. Relax the neck, release the shoulders. If you want to try again, interlace the fingers. Take the crown of the head down. And then walk in with the legs, keeping the legs bent. Squeeze the legs together, bend the knees up towards the ceiling, and then straighten through the legs. Press the elbows down, press the forearms down. Lift the shoulders away from the ears. Extend up through the hips, up through the knees, up through the ankles. Stretch up into the big toes, pulling the little toes down towards your face. Now to come out with straight legs, keep the thighs firm, press them towards the backs of the legs and slowly lower the legs down. Keep the shoulders lifted as you do that. If you need to bend the legs, just bend the legs and come out. And rest in Adho Mukha Virasan. Back of the neck long. And now if that was comfortable and you want to move on further, again remember this, you can come back and try another day to come up with straight legs. Prepare your headstand, head in the right place, walk in with straight legs, and then press the thighs up. Keep the toes connected to the floor until the legs feel really firm. Then swing the legs up, both of them together. Keep the grip on the legs, keep rolling the thighs in towards each other. Keep the buttocks soft, spread through the backs of the legs. Spread through the hamstrings, open the backs of the knees and extend from the head of the calf up to the heel. Don't lose your base. Press the arms down, press the elbows down, lift the shoulders. And then to come out, resist with the legs, press the thighs up, but lower the feet down so you're opening through the backs of the knees the whole time. Release the feet to the floor. Rest, Adho Mukha Virasana. and then release the hands either side of your feet so the shoulders roll down, child's pose. Palms are facing up by your feet. Arms are soft, face soft, legs soft. Now we're gonna come into Adho Mukushvanasan. So come to Virasan, just sit back, roll the shoulders back, Lift up through the chest, tailbone down. Then Adho Mukushvanasana. Lift the hips up, straighten the legs. Relax through the back of the neck, roll the shoulders out. Release the face. If this doesn't feel like it's restful enough, grab a bolster and place the bolster so it will be directly below your head so you can rest the head onto the bolster. Now know that you still have to work the arms, you still have to work the legs and the head just softens into that soft space. Do not collapse into the bolster. So the arms, they're pressing away from the floor. The back of the neck is long, forehead is supported gently. Press the thighs back, open the backs of the knees. Pressing into the hands, lengthening through the arms. Come back, sit in Virasan. Ascend the spine. And remove the bolster and come into Adho Mukha Virasan. So you're going to bring big toes together, knees apart after you've removed your blanket, your towel. Bring the body down between the thighs, lengthen the arms, rest the head on the floor.
checks the face. You're going to come back to Adam Akushvanasan. Lift the hips, unfurl the legs. Hit the tops of the thighs back. And you're going to walk forwards into Uttanasana. So step the legs forwards, have the legs wide apart. Come on to the fingertips, move the spine in. Work the legs. Lift the chest away from the hips, lift the breastbone away from the hips, make length on the front of the body. And then when you're ready, clasp the elbows. Still trying to maintain the length that you created, the space on the abdomen. Relax the face. Change clasp of the elbows, and again, lift and lengthen the elbows away from the hips. Face soft, gaze soft. Come onto the fingertips, lift and lengthen one more time. Then bend the knees, sit back, dandarsan. Press the legs down. Roll the shoulders back, stretch the heels away. The more you press the legs down, the better the release on the backs of the legs, stretch on the hamstrings. Coming to Paschimottanasana, so take hold of the feet, inhale, lift and lengthen, look up, exhale, fold forwards. Rest the face between the legs, Holding on to the feet, lengthening through the spine. Broaden the shoulders, release through the back of the neck. Inhale, come up. From your Paschimottanasana, you release, come up. Sit down, Darsan. And then you're going to grab some foam blocks. You need four of them. You make a rectangle with them so they fit the sides of your mat. And then take a blanket and place that so the edge of the blanket comes to the edge of the blocks. You're going to need a belt. And the belt needs to be as wide, well, from armpit to armpit. So just measure the belt. And that's so that that will hold your elbows in. And then put that down to one side. The next thing you're going to need is a chair. And you want to place the chair so that you'll be able to um, bring the legs to the chair for halasan. So that's bringing the legs over onto the chair, keeping the back straight. So give yourself a bit of space. You need a little soft pad or a towel for your head. And then you're going to lie over the over the blocks so your shoulders are going to come onto the block put the belt onto one elbow and then lie down make sure the neck feels comfortable and then if you make fists and just place your fists above your shoulders that's where you want your shoulders to be so you've got a bit of a gap because you're going to roll up onto your shoulders now hold on to the belt keep the head soft neck soft and then walk the feet up the wall Place the belt over the other elbow, so that's bracing your elbows now. Take the feet away from the wall and bring them over to the chair. Now know that you can release out of this at any time. Now stretch, interlace the fingers and stretch the arms away. Walk the shoulders away a little and then support the hands onto your back. Raise the legs up towards the ceiling, straight legs. Now the shoulders to the elbows press down. The back of the neck is soft and the head is rested on the pad. Now take the feet back enough so that the weight is definitely in your arms. And then stretch the legs up. Carefully step the legs back towards the wall. And then lower your hips down and just see how you feel. When you're ready, lift the hips back up again. 
Take the legs over towards the chair, back into Halasan. Be on the toes, press the thighs up, lift up the trunk. Stretch up one leg and then bring the other leg to join it with the hands supporting on the shoulder blades or towards the shoulder blades. Keep pressing the elbows down, pressing the forearms down. Squeeze the legs together, grip them together. Extend from the head of the calf up to the heel. Roll the thighs in towards each other. Buttocks soft. Trunk long, waist long. Keep the throat soft. If you take the heels back, the weight will come more into the arms. Keep squeezing the legs together. Rolling the thighs in. And then bring the legs down towards the chair. Lifting up through the hips, release your belt, release the arms and roll down. Roll onto your sides and up you get. Remove your chair. Then come back to your pad. So you're going to lie over the, the pad, over the blocks again. Have your belt nearby, put it on your elbows. And again, walk your feet up the wall. And then take the legs over into Halasan. If your hamstrings are long enough, you can still use the chair. You don't need to get rid of the chair. So if you go to go into Halas and it's too much, roll out, go back and get your chair. Otherwise support the back and lift up into shoulder stand. Now grip the legs together. Remember the two legs are squeezing together so they become one leg. And the legs are lifting off the trunk. Roll the thighs in, pressing down into the arms. Release, come back into Halasan, toes to the floor, release your belt and roll down slowly. Rest. Slide off your blocks. Come into Sukhasan. Chest lifts, the shoulders roll down towards the floor. Relax the knees. Legs are crossed. Thighs feel heavy. Chest is lifted. Abdomen soft. Have the palms facing up. Change across to the legs and again rest the knees down. This should feel comfortable on the neck, the throat, the spine, the hips, everywhere. Stay here for a moment, releasing the face. And bend up the knees, roll onto your side. And then sit up, back on your pad, on the raise, on the bricks. Simple cross legs. Bring the hands to prayer position, pressing the palms together. Taking the shoulders down. Pay your respects. Release the arms and then take Shavasana, relaxation.